Oh, my God. That sucked. <laughs> that was terrible. That was awful. Okay, judges. Our two champions have turned in their weapons and they've been tested. Now it's up to you to determine which one of them will be the Forged and Fire champion. Doug, let's go ahead and start with Matt's Blade. Off the bat, when you pick up Matt's Blade, it feels good in the hand. It is so light. If you're taking this into combat and you're doing multiple cuts in a fast way, this is the blade you would want to have in your hand. We know that it can take a bullet. When it cut through sugarcane, easy and fast, nice and clean. When it came to a carcass, different. It's just too flexible to where the transference of energy basically just wobbled the whole blade. But just like in combat, though, you never know what you're going to face. Dave. This is the kind of work I, I, you know, I've come to expect from Matt. You can see you know, he's got the pattern weld on the guard and on the pummel. It's almost hard to believe that I'm holding a sword this big and it's this light and has these dimensions. The only issue I have is that flexibility in the combat situation. If I were thrusting this into somebody, it would flex. That's a bit of an issue. What do you think, Jay? Well, as we've already said, the craftsmanship's beautiful. You know, it's an amazing job on this heat treat. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a sword or blade this long flex as much as it did beyond 90 degrees in both directions and come back to true. But the different density of that pig, mm -hmm. it was just too much, too, too dense. And instead of cutting through and following through, it torqued around. But I mean, it's still phenomenal work. It's pretty good. For a one-week build, I was pretty happy with the, yeah, with the totally. quality on it. And the amount of time we had. All right. Moving on to Ben's blade. Uh, he's given us this uh, lowland guard, you know, very similar to the, the actual William Wallace uh, guard. And this amazing pattern that, that travels the entire length of the blade. What he's got is a blade that's got enough meat here in its cross section to be stiff enough. I mean, it's plenty flexible. And, and in the test, we actually saw it flex when they hit the pig. But it's stiff enough that it'll pass right through that. The sugar cane chop, I went through the first bundle cleanly, hit the second bundle and started bogging down. And I think that's because there's really no distal taper in this blade. It's sort of the same width the entire length, but still fabulous. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. I don't know why I had to go up against old iron leg. That horse is undefeatable. <laughs> it's a lot heavier than uh, than Matt's, but it's balanced. Then if you look at the the whole overall construction of this blade, both are great champion's blades. All right. Judges, I need you to be 100% certain on your decision here. Doug, have you decided who is the Forged and Fire champion? Yes, I have. Dave? Yeah, yeah, not easy, but yeah. Jay? That's tough, but yeah. All right, judges, let's go tell our Smiths. I know I need to make a move. I got a big concern right here with Jason. He does not have a glove on. I'm more concerned about my blade than I am burning myself. He's gonna burn his hand. Oh, no. He just burned the heck out of his hand.